How people move from saint to sinner is yet a mystery that cannot be fathomed. SBF, Sam Bakeman Fried's revealed personality hits thousands by storm when the altruistic personnel and philanthropist was charged with alleged fraud. Ross's stories about his failed project, FTX, which he jilted, hits headlines daily. The story gets more interesting as more secrets are being uncovered daily. In today's video, we'll be looking at a further juicy uncovering about SBF's case and of a secret bank where SBF is believed to have supposedly kept part of the money he stole. We're sure you want to see this, so don't be in a hurry and watch this video to the end. Hello and welcome back to the crypto world. Since Sam Bakeman Fried's alleged fraud was discovered last year, the federal government has taken nearly $700 million from him. The Southern District of New York's U.S. Attorney Damian Williams said in the filing that all of the funds were held in U.S. dollars rather than cryptocurrencies, while the government pursued its lawsuit against Bakeman Fried, also known as SBF. For recap, the disgraced former CEO is charged with misappropriating funds from FTX to its affiliated index fund, Alameda Research, and failing to take sufficient measures to safeguard investors from dangers. After operating as one of the top Bitcoin trading platforms for more than three years, the company filed for bankruptcy in November. Additionally, Bankman Fried is accused of misusing billions of dollars in client cash that were moved prior to the collapse, which the prosecution claims he did by making political donations and purchasing real estate. He was detained in the Bahamas in December 2022 and then sent back to the U.S. He is accused of eight charges of money laundering, wire fraud, and other offenses by the Department of Justice. But Bankman Fried later entered a not guilty plea to those accusations. He insists that no cash was stolen and that FTX ought to be able to get the money back from the customers. The former CEO also blamed Binance, a rival crypto exchange firm whose failed partnership with FTX in November rattled markets in the run-up to the company's bankruptcy. Under the leadership of new CEO John J. Ray, the corporation is seeking to locate missing FTS assets. Jay recently stated that around $5.5 million of the lost $8 million in asset had already been recovered. Bakeman Fried is presently being held in his parents' home in Palo Alto, California, under house arrest. His trial is scheduled to start in early October this year. Now, on to the juicy part of today's video. According to a court filing issued earlier January 2023, federal authorities seized about $50 million that Sam Bakeman Fried had in a small Washington bank. The money was being held by the FTX co-founder, in a Farmington State Bank account, which was now being seized by police. Prosecutors stated on January 4 that they confiscated $49,999,500 that Bankman Fried had placed with Farmington State Bank as a part of an endeavor to locate roughly $700 million in assets for forfeiture. Bakeman Fried's trading firm, Alameda Research, purchased a 11.5 million stake in Farmington in March of last year, more than doubling the bank's total net worth at the time. Until then, the little-known bank was the 26th smallest bank in the United States, out of approximately 4,800. It's based in Farmington, Washington, which has only 146 residents and is so small that Google Street View doesn't even cover the entire town. Markets Insider revealed that the Farmington State Bank had only three staff at the time of Bankman Account Freed's establishment. Furthermore, until March 2022, they specialized in agricultural loans to farmers. According to the bank, at the time of the NYT piece, it had 32 employees and a valuation of $115 million. That was comparable with other similar technology banks and trust banking businesses. Prior to Alameda's investment, the bank registered the name Moonstone as a trademark in the fourth quarter of 2022, despite not having credit cards or online banking. The mission of Moonstone was to help the growth of next-generation finance by becoming a financial services company with an emphasis on cryptocurrencies. 
With waves of high-profile bankruptcies and liquidity difficulties affecting Bitcoin over the past year, the little rural bank said it would be abandoning the Moonstone brand and going back to its roots as a community bank. In a statement released on January 18th, Farmington said that the change in approach reflects the impact of recent happenings in the crypto asset industry and the resulting changing legal climate relating to crypto asset enterprises. But there is a little something about this Farmington Bank we'd like to show you. But before we go on to see the rest of the video, take out time to subscribe to this channel if you've not done so. According to the sightings from Unlimited Hangout, one Archie Chan purchased the bank in 1995 according to a 2010 interview with Farmington's then-president John Widman. But Chan sold the bank to FBH Corporation, also known as Moonstone Bank, in 2020, whose chairman is currently John Chalapin, the bank's largest shareholder. According to report, Chalapin joined Farmington's board of directors soon after Farmington was purchased by Chalapin's FBH Corp. Protos, specifically referred to Deltic Bank and Trust, where Chalapin serves as chairman as one of the key banks for both Alameda Research and Tether. Alameda Research, along with other businesses connected to the FTX networks of firms and Sam Bakeman Fried, had a significant involvement with Chalapin's Deltic Bank and Trust. Why? The name Moonstone Bank was trademarked by Farmington State Bank in March of 2022, and it was adopted three days later. On March 7, Alameda Research, the trading division of FTX, made an $11.5 million investment in FBH Corp, that is, Moonstone Bank. Following its bankruptcy, FTX appointed John Ray as the new CEO. According to documents Ray produced, FTX and its affiliated companies had a total of 17 accounts at Deltec. The majority of these accounts were linked to West Realm Shire Services and Alameda Research, both of which Sam Bakeman Fried ultimately controlled. However, Deltec has failed to comment on any specifics of the connections to companies owned by Sam Bakeman Fried or affiliated with FTX. Although there have been rumors recently that Deltec was able to purchase Ansbacher, another Bahamas-based bank, earlier this year due to FTX's connections, rumors to which Deltec has vehemently refuted the claims. According to report from Unlimited Hangout, the association between the Shalapin-led Deltec Tether, FTX, and Alameda appear to point to a pattern. Additionally, the connections make it appear plausible why Shalapin would want to buy Farmington. The Protos report draws the following conclusions about the case. No one can fully explain the links between Farmington, Deltec, FTX, Alameda, and Tether, nor can anyone determine what the $11.5 million investment from Alameda Research was for nor can anyone explain why a small rural bank in southeast Washington state would be used to move millions of dollars by Alameda. Not to mention, it's still not clear how FTX, a company based in the Bahamas under investigation by leading financial watchdogs, managed to acquire stock in a bank that had received federal approval. This conclusion truly is of great concern, and also these connections does raise eyebrows but it still seems yet unclear indeed. Moving on, along with the money SBF had placed in Farmington, they also seized $21 million from the brokerage firm EDNF Man Capital Markets and just over $100 million from an account from the cryptocurrency focused bank Silvergate Capital. Approximately 55 million shares, valued at $526 million of his in Robinhood, a cryptocurrency and stock trading website were also seized by U.S. officials who are also looking into Bankman Fried's possession of cryptocurrency and cash in three accounts with rival cryptocurrency exchange Binance. According to a court document uncovered earlier this January, the authorities also took more than $170 million in cash from several bank accounts. And the digging still continues. This SPF story truly holds more than we can see on the surface. Although it poses no financial advice, 
and does not seek to defame any of the parties mentioned in this video. It's mainly informative to help you keep your watch till every truth and secret is uncovered. Who knows, there could be other accounts and uncoverings that were yet to come across that you may find useful. Until then, do leave your comments in the comment section if you have any, and subscribe to this channel if you've not done so already, and turn on your notification bells to get notified when we've uploaded new videos like this. Thanks for watching.